Let's go to our next question. It is a video. It comes from Matthew Thompson in Tawong, Victoria. I'm an atheist. What do you think will happen when I die? And how do you know? <laughs> George Powell, we'll start with you. You ought to be an authority on this, I imagine. Uh, well, I know uh, from the Christian point of view, God loves everybody, that every genuine motion towards the truth is a motion towards God. And uh, when an atheist dies, like everybody else, they'll be judged on the extent uh, to which they have moved towards goodness and truth and beauty. But in the Christian view, God loves uh, everyone except those who turn his back, uh, turn their back on him through uh, evil acts. Oh, so atheism not an evil act? No, not a, in, well. No, I don't. In most cases, it's not. So for many so, honest so, well, atheists. I, mean, I guess to, to get to the point of the question, I suppose I mean, he may, may be having a little wager here. But um, is it possible for an atheist to go to heaven? Uh, well, it's not my business. No, but I, well, <laughs> uh, you're, you're the only but authority we have here. I, I would say <laughs> certainly. Yeah. Certainly. And just, just on the subject of heaven, if we can, what is your own concept of what heaven is? Well, even St Paul was severely agnostic, but one, one way in which the uh, Christians differ from the Greeks, the Greeks believed in the immortality of the soul. Uh, we Christians uh, believe uh, with one section of the Jewish people uh, in the resurrection of the body. So, uh, in some sense, we will be there as continuing persons. In some, with a new heaven and a new earth, with all the good things that we've done, will be incorporated into the new heaven and new earth. How it'll work out, I don't know, because I think physically and morally and intellectually, we're at our peak at different stages in our life. Mm. How it'll work out, I've got no idea, but that's, that's the, the general outline of but, Christian but teaching. But you, 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 you think about it as a, as a kind of collection of individual souls. In fact, obviously billions and billions of individual souls with their own personality existing in some uh, yeah, galactic uh, that, space. That, that, I think that's a traditional... Well, uh, that, that's certainly the traditional Christian view. It's, it's the view that I uh, accept. And it's also the view of, of some of the Jews. Richard Dawkins. <laughs> well, the answer to the question of uh, what's going to happen... When, when we die, it depends whether we're buried, cremated, or give our bodies to science. Um, I, I'm, um, I'm can I just can I say this: uh, if you if you're actually an agnostic and you keep aside this small portion of your brain um, for subsequent proof, I mean, you might get presented with that proof when you die. The brain is what we do our thinking with. The brain is going to rot. That's that's, that's all there is to it. Um, I'm intrigued by the cardinals saying that the Christians believe you're going to be resurrected in the body. I mean, that's an astonishing idea, and I, I don't believe you really mean that. And I, and I think, um, just, just as I don't believe you really mean that the, the wafer turns into the body of Christ, you must mean body in some rather special sense. Um, uh, 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 Mr Dawkins, I don't say things I don't mean. Well, then what do you mean? Do you, uh, if do you, 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 I'll, I'll tell you. And I've just explained what the bodily re re resurrection means to the extent that I can understand it. I certainly believe that when the words of, of consecration are uttered, that they become the body and blood of Christ. Now, I, I've had a little kid come up to me when that was explained and say, can I have a look in the chalice to see if it's turned to blood? And of course it hasn't. We, we don't uh, believe that. Uh, it's not... E against reason. I believe it because I believe the man who told us that was also the Son of God. He says, this is my body, this is my blood. And I'd much prefer to listen to him and take his word than yours. But... <laughs> but, other, but other Christian denominations are quite happy to take that as a symbolic, uh, metaphorical meaning. Um, Catholics take it as a literal meaning, and I take it. I'm, I'm trying to be charitable by trying to suggest that it's that same sense in which you say that the, that the body is resurrected, because the body is certainly not resurrected in terms of the cell, the protoplasm, the proteins, the DNA. That doesn't happen any more than the wafer turns into, into that. You're, you're right when you said that, the, to, to, that to the child. So you do not mean that the wafer turns into the body in any sense in which normal English language usage would 
uh, would understand. You mean it in some other sense, and I take it it's that same sense that the body is resurrected. Uh, well, can I, can I ask you whether you do mean it in a metaphorical sense, in the I, same I, way that you believe Adam no, and Eve I, are metaphorical I, 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 creatures? No, I, I, I don't. Uh, I follow it. I, I understand it. Uh, according to a system of metaphysics that was spelled out by the Greeks before Christ came, which we've adopted. And that is, uh, there's a substance which is the core uh, uh, of a being, and it is revealed to us through what are called accidents. Now, I believe that the core uh, of the being becomes the, uh, the bread, becomes the body and blood of Christ. It continues to look exactly as it was. Uh, we believe that in the Catholic Church. Now, I know you're a cultural Anglican, uh, and we can't blame the... I'm also a rationalist. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I use... English is my native language. Uh, the wafer does not become the body of anybody okay. in the English language. Right, no, I, th I think we've resolved that we both... Well, that you both disagree on this point uh, rather substantially. Let's go to our next question, which is from Michael Matty. Um, is it okay to tell a child that God doesn't exist? Richard Dawkins. I think it's OK to tell a child the truth. Uh, what I, but I would prefer to um, encourage a child to make up her own mind and to think uh, about the evidence and to believe things when there is evidence. What I think is not OK, what I think is deeply immoral, is to tell a child that when she dies, if she's not good, she's going to go to hell. That seems to me to be mental child abuse and an utter disgrace. <laughs> Uh, I remember when I was in England, we were preparing some uh, young English boys. Uh, they're from very... Uh, uh, preparing them for... for... Come thank, on. Thank you. Uh, preparing them for First Communion. And uh, they were uh, very patriotic young lads. And uh, one of them announced uh, very breezily to me uh, that he didn't believe in hell. And, uh, I mean, certainly the idea of any child being sent to hell, I agree that that is uh, grotesque and that's, uh, that's not the Christian God. But anyhow, this, this, kid, I said to kid, this kid, I said simply, um, Hitler? Do you think Hitler might be in hell? started the Second World War, caused the death of 50 million? Or would you prefer a system where Hitler got away with it for free? Anyhow, the little kid was quite patriotic and he said, hmm, he realised hell was in with a chance <laughs> if Hitler was going to go there. What, what, what about a system where he was simply obliterated and didn't exist anymore? Well, he, he would have got away with too much as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. so, so you actually well, prefer the idea of hell as a place of punishment for... But for who? Where do you draw the line? Do unbelievers go to hell? No, no, no. The only people... Uh, well, one, I hope nobody's in hell. Uh, we, we Catholics generally believe that there, there is a hell. I hope nobody's there. I certainly believe in a place of purification. I think it'll be like uh, getting up in the morning and you throw the curtains back and the light is just uh, too much. God's light would be too much uh, uh, for us. But I believe... Uh, uh, on behalf of the innocent victims in history, that the scales of justice should work out. And if they don't, life is radically unjust. The law of the jungle prevails. OK, I, I, well, I'm just going to go to our next question, which we can respond to some of these issues through that. It's a video question. It comes from Nick Walsh in Ningen, New South Wales.